Nestled in mid-Rand Johannesburg, an independent dog shelter, Barking Mad, are helping unwanted, abused and abandoned dogs, all desperately looking for new homes. Their fearless leader is the indomitable Tracy McQuarrie. She may be pint-sized, but when it comes to animal welfare, she's a force to be reckoned with. Tracy's attitude is, if you want something done, get your hands dirty and do it yourself. I started Barking Mad two years ago after watching a program called Dogtown on National Geographic. I decided to go through and have a look at the rescue centre there because I'd been involved in rescue centres here just as a volunteer. Um, I went and did a course there. Um, how to start an animal sanctuary and how to run an animal sanctuary. Um, originally I was just going to do the course so that I could come back and carry on with my volunteer work but just be able to help a bit more. But what I discovered when I was there is um, they've created a really nice safe haven for dogs that people deem problem dogs um, or hard to home dogs and I wanted to be able to provide that facility for the other rescue centres here in South Africa. So. We generally take in dogs that um, either our inspector has rescued um, from a bad situation or confiscated, um, or we take in dogs from other rescue centres that they're struggling to home. Um, either they have a behaviour problem or a really expensive medical problem that they can't take care of. Um, we're this, those kind of dogs safe haven. Since Tracy likes to maximize her spending on the dogs when it comes to maintenance or even building, she does a lot of it herself. Obviously first prize would be for a company to come in and do this for us, but when budgets alone, we're having to pay for it ourselves, I'm afraid. Everybody's three minutes have to get down and work on it ourselves. Oh, and I think if we get enough volunteers this weekend, I've got, a, I've got wood to, fix, um, to finish it. In the baking hot summer sun though, it's not just fences that need to be constructed. The dogs also need some shade for their afternoon naps. And it's up to Luke, Tracy's assistant, to make sure this happens. Are you busy building a gazebo? Provide some shade for the dogs. It's a bit hot now in the summer. And yeah, they need some shade and some somewhere to chill during the day. But the activity never stops at Barking Mad as their December food delivery from Montego arrives as scheduled. An extra large order to keep the hounds well fed through the Christmas season. Um, quite a lot. They're 25 kilograms each and we've just brought in stock about 50 bags of 25 kilograms. Lots of money, but we need to feed our dogs the best food possible. Um, Montego had this um, competition on throughout the year that you had to do like displays and you had to order certain things um, and you, the, you could get, if you did everything each month you got points and if you got the most points you became an ultimate retailer and we became an ultimate retailer and I got an SMS this morning that we get something like 3.8 credit so we could either put it in credit towards our bill or get it given to us in cash so that's mm. cool and then there's still going to be a one winner um, of 200,000 rand so I'm keeping everything crossed like that my name is James yeah. James Mlambo I'm a dog trainer I'm a, a volunteer coordinator and 
handyman. <laughs> Every day we deal with, you know, the dynamics of the rescue centre. So if we find that dogs that have maybe been getting along and now having a problem with another dog, you know, we are always um, trying to move dogs around to make it most um, harmonious. And then we've got Houdinis that climb and jump and those dogs, we need to make sure they're in one of our secure runs. This little guy is one such Houdini. He managed to jump over a six foot wall and through an electric fence, but fortunately was found by Luke. Yeah, I put him in there over there. It's a six foot wall with electric fence on it. I don't know how he got out to you without hurting He's tiny, but he didn't even set the, like, you know, if, if you touch it, it sets the alarm off. Yeah. He didn't even set the alarm off. How did he do it? <laughs> they think he climbed the tree. Oh! The only way, because there's a tree and in your right. off the tree. Yeah, over. that's the only way we can Ooh, think he got down. that high. Because I thought, let's put him in where the tree is because it's nice and cool. Yeah, we're thinking oh. shade. So, this move is complete for now. But, but Tracy's big concern is will they get along with the neighbour? A dog so neglected, he had to have his leg amputated due to infection. It's decided to move these two yet again to one of the more central runs. At least if they're in there, if he fails any fence, the dogs are going to let us know. Have you got two leads? Okay, well you get another lead for them and we'll get these guys. Sorry, dude. Um, it's actually nice that we've managed to move Henry down now because of the swap we had to do today because he's actually a great human dog but he's very bad doggy dog so um, it'll be nice for him to be down that side because basically with these dogs just for safety we rather don't let volunteers come here whereas he's down there now so he's going to be able to go out for walks and he really enjoys them he enjoys the company d one of barking mad's regular volunteers arrives with a new addition a poor dog caught up in a bitter divorce battle and given up for adoption by its owners you know, they just get divorced and that's it. They just go their separate ways and the poor dogs, a day's notice. The chipped her, they've sterilised her, gave her all her injections. Um, and that's her new, that's her chip number. And the, whoever homes her has got to fill this in. OK. I don't like Christmas, I must say. I hate Christmas because there's so many animals that are killed just for people's satisfaction. Over greed, they eat too much, drink too much. Yep. I'm sorry, that's how I feel about it. I, I cook chicken once a year and that's, I, every one of these dogs gets yeah. chicken, rice and vegetables for oh Christmas breakfast. We had a, a litter of puppies about three months ago. Do you remember those nine? Um, and we got a call if they didn't get collected, they were going to be drowned. Yeah, they drowned them. Hold them underneath and that's it. They just hold them under the water until they're finished. How people can be so cruel, I don't know. Basically, a new dog, the first thing it has to do is go to the vet for its checkup. Um, the vets give, once the vets have given it a, a medical all clear, then they come through to the centre. We then um, we do an assessment where we see um, how the dog interacts with people, if it, how it is with its food, um, how it is with other dogs. Um, we do that test when they first come in and then we do do it again a couple of weeks later because you do find that when they first come in they're a bit scared um, and they're not really as confident and as naughty as they can be. So the real dog comes out in about two weeks and we do another assessment. Barking Mad prides itself on being able to socialise dogs into their new environments. They have a strict no-kill policy and are always willing to try and help these dogs find their forever homes. But this comes with its own unique set of challenges. A lot of the dogs that we end up taking in have been on the road for a very long time and they need extensive medical care, so we very rarely find their families again. We basically take in dogs that most people can't take in. I mean, we take in biters, um, either dogs that don't get on with other dogs or dogs that bite people. Um, we try and give them, those dogs, a second chance. If we know they are, you know, a jumper or an escape horse, we put a roof on their kennel. So, 
these two come from um, Claw, and when they first came, they were like very nervous of people. Um, as you can see, <laughs> that's changed. <laughs> That's what we were hoping to be, is to offer, to take the burden off the other rescue centres. But we also have an inspector division, um, and the inspector ends up bringing a lot of cruelty cases in, and so that takes up the speech and also control. <laughs> in so I can have dogs come into, into my office and basically there's my desk and chair. <laughs> I only need space for my laptop to do their reports and a bit of Facebooking. Um, we're going to fence it in so I can also bring a dog in every day to be part of office duty and then we'll play them sounds. Um, sounds things like washing machines, fridges, um, dishwasher, cars, light switches on and off, TVs, radios. Some of these dogs have never been inside a house in their lives, so they really don't, when they go home, it, the family struggle to get them to come in the house because they really don't understand. Tracy also firmly believes there is no such thing as a bad dog, only bad owners. We're just trying to find the good dog in there. At the moment, they've only exposed the bad dog. It's not always a bad owner because they, they were cruel or um, abuse them. Um, it could be they just didn't understand that, you know, a, a young dog like a young child needs to go to school and learn things and be taught things. A lot of dogs, like if they haven't lived with other dogs, they don't really have good doggy skills. So you'll see they'll go like barging up to another dog and the other dog's thinking, whoa, that's not how you come and greet me, you, you come in to fight. So, you know, a lot of the time when we're taking them out, it's just really to teach them some good manners. I mean, first of all, we have to get them to behave um, under control with us, the behaviours first, before we can even think of trying with um, other dogs. Even the dogs that are um, people aggressive, we found that once they've settled in here and they're given a routine and they know that when they see one of us coming, it's food or walk or treats, they start appreciating us coming there. We're not a threat to them. And they quickly turn around. A lot of them are very different when behind their fence. When you get them out of their gardens and they're going for their walks, they're 100% fine. But while they're in their gardens, they've already now established this as their turf. So those are the kind of things we have to keep an eye on. Um, so to help us with that, we then say to volunteers, please don't go to that run because we're busy working on a, a, a rehab program with them. These are the kind of dogs the rescue centre was created for. These are the kind of the dogs we want to take in. Dogs that are at other rescue centres, they're never going to get a home because they have the problems. So we want to take in the problem dogs so we can help them. This um, girl came in this week and while I was away and she apparently killed another dog that she lived with. But um, she came in and she's got quite a few medical issues that we were unaware of as well. So she's going to have to go see the vet and have a little checkup because she's got cherry eye and two large growths on her leg. Which we don't often get the full story, so it's not it's not a surprising thing. New arrival Delala is off to the vet with Luke for a checkup. Since she suffered so much neglect, the trip to the Blue Hills vet is nerve-wracking for her. Today. <laughs> now Luke needs to get Delilah out of the car and into the vet's office and dealing with a dog of this size isn't always easy. Clearly terrified, Luke calms Delilah letting her know there's nothing to fear. Uh, she probably does no socialising, no training, doesn't know anything, she doesn't know how to walk in a lead. This is kind of an outside dog, it's got a puppy and left her. He 
he manages to slowly coax Delilah into the vet's waiting room. Here, she sits nervously waiting for her appointment with the doctor. Finally, it's time for Delilah's checkup, and she sheepishly makes her way into the consulting room. we call an elbow hygroma, means the dog is lying on hard ground and the body is now trying to protect this area because it's the elbow. And sometimes they, they unfortunately do this here. You can see that. That's the first part how the body is trying to protect and then sometimes it fills up with fluid. And unfortunately there's no treatment for that except soft your, your mattresses and stuff. Just to be on the safe side, the vet decides to take a blood sample from the growth on Delilah's leg to make sure it's nothing too serious. Um, to tell a long story, they had seven dogs, which has killed two Dachshunds and a Fox Terrier. Um, but they're not entirely sure who did it. They had another horrible male, and it only happened when they were away. And they think it's her. Um, so we'll see how she goes with other dogs. We'll do the socializing. Little, little bits and see how you do. Yes. I started working about Kumat about two months ago, and I've been involved in animal welfare for years, so it's nice to find a job that at least covers the picture money to get there. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's not an infection, it's just okay. elbow hygroma. Okay. Very frustrating, but yeah. You know, we get a great deal with our vet, and our vets are really, really good at. Um, helping us with our cost, but we really are struggling to keep up this um, level of medical care, which I don't want us to ever um, not provide high medical care for the dog, otherwise we're not doing them any justice. No, this is just a vaccination. So, Delilah seems to be fine for now and is ready to be welcomed to her new home at Barking Mad. Whilst at the vet though, another little one hit by a car and left for dead is brought in and Barking Mad have offered to take her in. She was lucky, it's just some cuts and bruises, so nothing too major. Our hit and run victim and Delilah have now been chipped and treated and are ready for the trip back to their new home at Barking Mad. Did they check her for a chip? Delilah patiently waits to be put back in her run and Tracy, always concerned, asks about the lump on her elbow. And that thing on the elbow, they can't do anything. So like that dog's going to cost us two, three thousand rand now for this dog. So people don't understand why it, our costs are so high, it's because of that. It's like one dog can come in and then we res rescue litters of puppies and they are like a, a thousand rand a dog, easy to get them through all their vaccinations, their spays, their deworming, their chips. We can't stay on top of it unfortunately. The more we pay, the quicker we rack it up. And whenever we're like a bit trying to be cautious, that's when we get more. Get more. All the problem dogs are on. Our vet bill's the biggest problem. Obviously, our vet bill is huge. I mean, it's just ever growing. Last month alone, we were about 40,000 Rand. So that just keeps getting bigger. And the more we try and pay, the more um, severe cases are coming in. Last month, we had three big cases. We had 
Baron, um, who was just left for dead. Um, his leg was completely um, infected and it, we didn't even know if we could save his leg and we didn't even know if we could save him. He just, he was completely tired and skinny and the infection was bad, so he was in the vet for a couple of weeks. Um, the vet thinks he's probably knocked over by a car, and then the owners never saw cheap in for it. So, yeah, they left it for about three months at least. And the infection was so raw, they couldn't, they were wanted to amputate his leg, but he couldn't go under um, anesthetic. So, um, they treated him with antibiotics to try and control the infection, and he's yeah, healed so well. He's walking now on his leg, and he's going to hydrotherapy. He's really come a long way, so very impressed. Hey, Baron. Baron's rehabilitation to his leg will be a slow process, and he's fortunate to have someone like Luke guiding him through it. <laughs> On this side, he's got muscle from his good leg, and the bum leg is all the muscle atrophy, so we need to build up all this muscle so he can walk nicely again. And then at hydrotherapy, swimming in the water and things like that, that will help a lot. This kind of intensive therapy is offered to all the dogs that need it, but Barking Mad are currently at capacity, so they need your help to give one of their dogs its forever home. Tracy explains what's important when adopting a dog. What you've always got to realise is dogs do become territorial, so you know that's their turf. So if you're bringing in a new dog that's astray and you're not sure if your dogs have been well socialised, um, it's always better to let them meet off the grounds, not on your own property, take them for a walk together and see how they interact. Um, also remember, your guys have been there all their lives. So they know all the ins and outs. This little dog's gonna be a little bit more nervous, a little bit more scary, but you mustn't mollycoddle the dog. If you bring the new dog in and you're fussing and fussing around this little dog, your dogs are gonna think, what's going on here? Who's this newbie getting all mom and dad's attention? So. In that sense, you need to just kind of let them find them, get used to each other in their own terms without you interfering too much. Obviously, if you see there's going to be a fight, they give lots of signals. Um, and you can see when one dog's particularly unhappy, then rather keep them separate for a while and just keep trying to introduce slowly. We are always happy to have volunteers helping us um, just to take the dogs for a walk, let our dogs get to meet more people that they don't, wouldn't normally meet. So they, you know, the more people a dog can meet, the more um, experiences they have with a different person in a different situation, it makes the dog a better dog. So we really, really value um, our volunteers that come and help us. We come here every Thursday to walk them and to cuddle them. We're happy to have volunteers here um, any of the days, eight till five, as many days as possible. Um, the, the more a volunteer comes, they get to know um, our animals better and you know they kind of build up a relationship and start noticing things. We learn a lot from our volunteers. There's things the dogs do with the volunteers that they don't do with us. I mean, all that stuff's important for us to help that dog find its perfect home. Yeah. And what was nice today, um, I went to do a, a radio show at Animal Talk Radio and I got to talk about Baron and Courage and Foxy. They were our three little miracle dogs this year. And so hopefully with that bit of exposure, um, they'd be able to get a home soon. Especially Foxy, because Shazzy and Savannah, his ladies, are going to their home on Friday. So he's going to be on his own. None of us are able to divorce ourselves from the emotion involved in this kind of work. I mean, we get attached to every dog. When a dog goes home, it's an emotional, you know, we've got to know their personalities. Um, we knew what they came in, their naughty traits that they've managed to get rid of. And you just get really attached, especially the dogs that are uh, long time dogs. And because we do take in problem dogs and medical dogs and older dogs, our dogs do tend to be here a lot longer, so it's it's hard. Some of the dogs we've tried to save, you know, they've either gone into organ failure or something bad's happened, and it's just, it's 
it's one of those days where you just hope tomorrow's gonna be better because it's, we still think of them all. I mean, we miss them all so much, the ones that we can't save, especially because you find in their last days, you do so much with them, trying to medically help them. We had an old boy, Baloo. Um, he came in with little Bubblicious and Spikaroo. Um, he was a great guy. Um, we, we lost him, he was old, he was an older dog, but he had you know nearly two good years with us. Unfortunately, not a lot of people want to adopt an older big dog. He already had you know a bad back end, um, and he eventually also, it was just complete organ failure. We had Morris, the German Shepherd boy, we actually um, rescued him, and we sent him in for a dental because his, his mouth just smelled very bad and the vets did some tests and he was in the end stages of kidney failure. We did keep him on kidney food and kidney medication for as long as possible. Um, and he was a really sad case because up until the last day, he was still playing with his ball. He would still play fetch, but it was the same thing. He couldn't eat. He was just withering away. Um, and we had Gordon, um, also a German Shepherd. He um, he kept having fits um, and then he just also it ended up being it was just all his organs completely shutting down. He was an older boy. He was a great dog. We had two homes waiting for him to be a part of their family and we were so excited because we couldn't believe this older boy had found a, a home and then he just it and it happened like within a week and it almost it's like we don't even have time to prepare for them not being there anymore and it's just you know you go there to say hi and they're not there anymore we have so many happy tales i mean we've homed hundreds of dogs and it's just so great when especially when they go to the families and they send you the picture updates and let you know how they're doing. And it's got a few photos of him, he's absolutely he's stunning. A little, uh, he was one of the puppies I was talking about where they were going to drown them. And there was nine of them and every single one got a home. So it just shows you. And he's a how old is he now? Pitsky. He's about six, six months rough. But he's massive, he stands about like knee height already. He's got the most gorgeous mate. He plays with my little sausage dog, she growls at him, he growls back and then he lays on his back. He's absolutely amazing. Oh, I couldn't man. wish for a better personality. His little personality and his temperament is absolutely amazing. There's a few ways you can help. You can actually sponsor one of our dogs in our care. Um, you can make a donation of your choice. You can do that um, via our website, barkingmad.co.za. Um, that way we can generate income for dogs. Um, we have over 86 here now in our care. So if you know, if everybody could put a little bit of money to each dog each month, that would be a great help. SMS dog to 38919 and help save a shelter dog today. Ah, 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 ah.